Let's talk about dynamic and static compression in Internet Information Services. So if we go to our Add Roles and Features on a server that already has IIS installed, you're going to see that there are two different types of compression. So if we go ahead and expand our web server, and we'll go down to where it says Performance, we can see static compression is automatically installed and enabled. And that makes things run much faster. As you can see on the right-hand side, it makes things go faster with ASP.NET, and it does not make the processor work any harder. However, sometimes you want to have dynamic compression turned on. And dynamic compression also makes the website run faster, but it does tend to use more CPU processing, processing power. But that's okay, because most of the time, our processor isn't doing anything. So we can make our website run much faster by clicking the dynamic content compression, which is not checked by default when you install IIS. So let's go ahead and choose that installation. It doesn't take very long. If after turning on dynamic content compression, you notice that your CPU cycles are very high, it's possible you may need to have more CPUs added, either physically or virtually, if it's a virtual machine. If that still is not good enough and your CPUs are still high, then you may want to turn dynamic compression off, but I really doubt that's going to happen in most cases. Let's go ahead and go to IIS Manager. And we'll expand, we'll go to our website, and we'll take a look at compression. Double click, and we can see that both dynamic and static content compression are turned on. And if you want, you can turn it off without completely uninstalling the uh, uh, role service by just unchecking and either one of these. And then you can see what kind of difference that makes on your processor and the speed of your website. So that's how we turn on and enable dynamic and static content compression in IIS on Windows Server 2019.